and we are live. See how I did that rather than going, are we live? Is it live yet? I don't know. Is it live? That was good. It was very impressive. Hello, everyone. How are you? Hey, Rick. Hey, movies and stuff. Sandra, thanks for joining us tonight. And um, I, got, I got a new camera. I don't know if it looks any better, but um, my yeah, skin's looking pretty handsome, still. my friend. Yeah, yeah. I mean, pretty handsome. Oh, hello to everybody on the replay as well. So if you're watching this replay, we really appreciate you clicking that button. Yeah, that people are awesome. actually watching the replay. Somebody in Sweden is watching. Peter is watching in Sweden. Good morning. It's 2 a.m. in Sweden right now. Jeez. Peter, Peter gets I sleep like I do, I guess, you know, whenever he can. It's at these moments I wish I spoke more languages. Be like great to, you know. Like Swedish? A line of Swedish would be good. A line the of only thing I know is tack is, I think, thank you. And I did know coffee. I used, to, I used to live with a Swedish guy, and he used to make this coffee. It was so strong, you could almost stand the spoon up in it. He was pretty hardcore. I, so, I got to use that. You guys hear that? That's um, The coffee was so strong, you could stand the spoon up in it. I've never oh, used yeah, it. mate. All right. All right. So that's all good. Right. Let's, so, all right. So what we're going to do tonight is we're going to talk about guitar gadgets. And uh, I have actually uh, – my friend Blake um, kind of, as a funny thing, sends me uh, – the worst gadgets he can find. So I've got a pretty good um, amount of pretty bad stuff here, but we're going to have you guys tonight on the chat. We want to make this more uh, participatory. Uh, there's oh. 12 of you out there. Big word, huh? Participatory. Wow, uh, we're going to have you vote tonight on the, uh, the best three and the worst three. So why don't we do this? Simon, you, you go ahead first and you give me your, uh, this, why don't you just give me two, give me two, two, two good ones. ones. Two, two, good, bad, ugly, whatever you want to do. Just give me two. Okay. Introduce two. So I'm, I'm going to start off by things that have revolutionized how the guitar works. Like for me personally, how the, like, there was a lot of things that, you so know. The mic is a little hot, Simon. You're garbled a little oh, bit. Too hot, too hot. Hang on, I just turn that down a little bit. How's that? that yeah. Up? Yep. Yeah. So things that genuinely have revolutionized how I play the guitar and all the stuff that you can do with the guitar is absolutely unbelievable this first thing is actually what i'm plugged into now this little fellow a wireless and this is like they used to be crazy expensive right but now they're actually pretty inexpensive i think this one was 200 bucks or something like that and it's made by boss so i figured i mean i could have bought one of those cheaper chinese brands that probably have exactly the same technology in and probably made in the same factory but i felt i could take this back to the store if it didn't work you know and uh, so I've used this thing on countless gigs, like, and it's been awesome. And particularly kind of some of the gigs I play with my, with my soul band is we don't have a sound guy often. So we, you, we, we do all the sound ourselves. And it's great because then you can play with the band. You can go out front, see how it sounds. And you can hear how the band sounds. You can sound check the band properly. It's so this point. thing has been absolutely fantastic. So fantastic. You know, I've wondered, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm stop you for a second. I've wondered yeah. why you would think with the technology getting better and better, I always wondered why the wireless plugs are not more ubiquitous. You guys don't yeah. know that. You guys can look that one up too, the ubiquitous. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, right. ubiquitous, yeah. So I would just think that because they're not picking up all kinds of crazy signals and the technology is getting better and better, but a lot of us uh, still rely on cables. I mean, I just, you know, did that gig a couple of weeks ago um, and uh, you know, had to run a 20, 30 foot cable because the, uh, the amps were, were set back. And yeah. I, that I would have really uh, benefited from a, uh, from a wireless. Yeah. So I've got to say, like, I don't play many massive stadium shows, <laughs> but uh, that's the only thing like, I've got some mates of mine here who play big, much bigger shows, like, you know, 20,000 people, whatever. And they, they don't like these because the way that the sound systems work, there's lots of Wi-Fi and stuff going on. So I think that could be a bit of a hindrance. But I mean, I figure if you're playing 20,000 people or whatever, you can go and buy yourself at like a $1,000 wireless. And you know. What if somebody in the crowd has a pacemaker? How does that, does it affect it at all? Or? Oh, it gets them really going. Apparently they, they jump up and down with the rhythm of your playing. You know, you start going like this. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly what i do it's fantastic you can you can pull the and get some going you really feel the power but, you know so that thing is is okay. amazing so this is called a boss wl20 i'm, I'm gonna get one um they also make a boss wl50 which i think they, there's a power pack and that goes on your pedal board 
my friend Michael's got one of these. It goes on your pedal board so it's always charged. Oh, that's um, cool. With the charge on this thing, um, I basically every day I charge it overnight and it, it runs for about eight hours. So even if I do a three-hour gig, it easily is fine. So now, how, does, how does it I work in conjunction with the, the pedal battery. board? So you go from the amp into the pedal board, then you have the other the receiver on the other no, end. No, I think board. it's actually got a tuner on it as well. So you plug, you just like a regular pedal board situation. You go on the in, and that's your tuner, and it's also the wireless thing. And you ch plug it into your power pack on your pedal board, and it just charges. Got it. Got it. That's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. And then when you finish with this part, you just unpull that bit and you dock it and it just charges. Movies and Stuff says you can find some on Amazon for like $27. Yeah. You know, a, yeah. guy, a guy up in Canada did me a favor and, uh, and I wanted to, to repay him somehow. And uh, he asked for a wireless system and I was going to buy him. He did me a big favor. I was going to buy him a, a nice one, like what you're talking about, a boss. And he was insistent. He wanted, I forget what the company was. It was a... a a knockoff brand, but it was like $48. And he said, it's amazing. He never has any trouble with it, uses it for gigs. So, um, you know, I don't know, again, it's hard to say, I, I think at some point you do get what you pay for. If boss is selling it for, for 200, I'm guessing you could probably get the knockoff for what a hundred maybe, but not for 27, not something that's comparable. I wouldn't think, but who knows? Yeah. Well, they do make them, don't they? They do make really, really cheap ones. And so that's what I was going to get. And then I was like, come on, son, let's, so uh, this was really good. I like that thing. Uh, but then, like I said, the two kind of things I was worried about were the, the, um, the connection and the battery. And I've never really had a problem with either. So awesome. It's great. Yeah. So never at a gig, have you, never at a gig. Have you been sitting and all of a sudden like, Oh no, I don't have any, uh, I don't have any sound. No, never. So I, and I don't know. I might, I might have done a hundred gigs with it. 200 gigs. I don't know. Like a lot of gigs. When gigs used to be a thing, remember that? Uh, now, the other thing. Okay. Which I love. Of course. Yeah. Is the clip-on tuner. Yeah. You, got, you have the Peterson strobe, right? No, I've got, this is a TC Electronics Polytune. Yeah. Which, frankly, I was sucked into a bit. Uh, so you don't need this one. Uh, a snark one, which is like 20 bucks is just as good to be honest, I reckon. Well, I'll tell you based on how they advertise. And again, I, I can't, I can't really speak from experience too much. I mean, the Peterson is definitely the best. It's expensive. It's seven, it's 70 or $80, but it does yeah. it within a hundredth of a cent. Yeah. Um, and the, the, the snark is only within two cents. Now the, the two, the only one that really rivals the Peterson is the one you have, the um, the yeah, TC Electronic Polytune. They're both uh, they're both really good. Now, if you're playing if you're playing a twelve string and you're doing gigs, you're real. I'm a little out of focus. All right, uh, I gotta just not move so much. Yeah. Am I still out of focus? No, you look good. All right. It's like it's like it's like we're in an '80s photo shoot. I quite like it. Soft focus. Okay. Um, yeah. All right, I'll try to keep my head still while I talk. Not now, I lost my train of thought. What was I talking about? Uh, we were talking about the. Oh yeah, yeah. If you're um, if if you're playing a twelve string live like I do, um, it's great to have a really accurate tuner. I mean, I want to be accurate down to as as accurate as I possibly can be, and definitely, you know, with the snark, I've noticed that depending on how how hard you hit the string, like if you hit a um, am I on here? You know, if you hit a if you hit the the fifth string this loud, you're gonna get one reading. If you hit it that loud, you're gonna get another reading. If you hit it with a yeah. pick, you're gonna get a third reading. So the um, the uh, Peterson doesn't uh, doesn't do that. It's uh, non discriminate. It's it's very accurate. So right, all right, that's, so that's those are your, those are your two good ones. All right, well I'm yeah, gonna so start. I've got to say with this one though, I got sucked into the polytune aspect of it. You know, the idea is that you you chuck it on. And you just basically can hit. Oh, oh, you can hit a chord. The idea, no, no. The idea is you hit all the open strings at the same time. Oh, okay. And then it tells you what's in and what's out. And, and like that's, I, I think it's it's more user error than, you know, thingy error, gadget error. But I'm just because I just was used to 
going, you know, one at a time. I never really used that function and obviously paid a lot for that. Yeah. I actually did a good video on that, uh, a phone tuner app versus this versus a pedal tuner to see what was the most accurate. So you Why can actually you... set that up on my channel. I'd like to watch that one. Can you, can you, um, while I'm doing my little shit, can you, yeah, you can do uh, yeah. bang. I will put a link to it in the, yeah, yeah, because now I'll say, Michael, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I think. Um, and this is not to, to be, um, elitist. If I'm, you know, making a video where I'm playing the 12 string and I want to, you know, if I'm, if I'm trying to do a cover song and I want to be super accurate because I'm putting a lot of time into it, you know, I always use the, uh, I actually have the Peterson uh, stomp box too. I got the old school Strobo stomp. I think back in the day it was like 300 bucks, but um, uh, there we go. But uh, I like a really accurate tuner. Um, guitar tuna overall is fantastic. I mean, it's convenient. You know, you've always got your phone on you. Uh, you know, you're not, as a matter of fact, I was telling one of my students, I'm like, you know, you're not always going to have a tuner on you. So, <clears throat> excuse me, you're not always going to have a tuner on you. So it's good to know how to tune by ear. And he's like, yeah, but I've always got my phone on me. So I, you know, I'm like, yeah, you're right. Never mind. Don't worry about it. Don't learn how to tune by ear. Don't, don't learn anything by ear anymore. <laughs> so, but yeah, it's, it's good. It's good enough. It's good enough for most situations for sure. So I've got, um, I got a couple things here. So this one, I did a video a long time ago on the, the, it was the, uh, the three worst. Okay. And this was my number one worst one at the time. Although I think I've got some that might be worse than that now. So there are these, these bands, these bands that are supposed to help you warm up. Now, personally, I have found that the best thing to, uh, to help you warm up the hands is to warm up. Like, you know, actually play notes on the guitar, but this is pretty, what? Cool. this actually They've got this in three levels. I guess it's beginner, intermediate, and advanced. So this is level one. So for all you, I would consider myself, now I don't know where I rank on the like band's level, but I know that you know I'm probably at least intermediate as far as a guitar player goes. But I, I'm going to start with, um, I'm afraid I'm not going to be good enough. So I'm going to start with level one here. I mean, yeah. Let me see. You know, oh, you know what? But I'm I'm right-handed, so I should be using my left hand for this. Anyway, this is such garbage. I mean, this is this is the kind of stuff they rely on. You know, the spouse. I won't say wives because I know there are women that play guitar too. You know, spouses that don't play, they rely on them. You know, taking their hard-earned money and buying this junk. Now, the next one I have, I still haven't figured out. So my friend Blake sent this to me, and I hope it's not ruining my uh, ruining my guitar. But this thing here. Um, I don't know. I, I took me about 15 minutes to put it on. And I guess I probably should have learned what I need to do with it before I advertise that it sucks. But I'll tell you what, there is no doubt about it that this thing sucks. I mean, why anybody would ever, I, I don't know. I think, was this on, uh, somebody helped me out here. Was this one on, um, shark tanks? I think somebody told me this was on shark tank. The only thing this is good for potentially is ruining the neck. So this, and th it's not, I thought originally like Simon did, I thought this was like, you know, turn your guitar into, um, what's the a game again? The, uh, um, guitar guitar hero. hero. Yeah. yeah. Tune your guitar into guitar hero, but it's not, it's, it's just, um, anyway, I'm not even, I was trying to get it back together. Like, Love like it really matters. All <laughs> right, Simon, give us two more. Okay. I've got some good I, ones. I, another good one. We were talking about tuners. And I see uh, Salvador's gone. First tuner was a tuning harp. Lol. Nice. Look at that bad boy. Uh, it's funny when I used to teach more kids. I get I I give this to them. They go, "What do you reckon this is?" <laughs> and they'd be like, "Is it like a funny capo or something?" <laughs> I thought you were saying like right? the small kids. I'd like you know poke them in the eye with it or something. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know. Um, yeah, and the, those pitch pipes, Robert, Robert, you're right. Those I had pipes. a pitch pipe. Someone my, mentioned my, my, that to me the yeah. other day, and I was like, I haven't thought of those for like 30 years. The problem with the pitch pipe is you need a tuner for the pitch pipe first, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, so um, now other things, kind of more, you know, unusual sort of things. This is awesome. 
uh, maybe I should ask people to guess what it is. Yeah, what do you so guys think? It's like a metal thing. It's got Velcro on the bottom here. And on the top, it's got sort of soft Velcro. Metal I reckon that Velcro. is for. Hmm. Hmm. I didn't know what it was for. Here we go. No, um, it's, back in it's, the 60s, we used a pitch pipe. Yeah. Yeah. You'd be like, Any you know, guesses? what are you doing? I'm hitting the pipe. <laughs> <laughs> the pitch pipe, buddy. Which Footstool for kids. I love that. That's awesome. Okay. I think we've uh, given enough time for guesses. Guitar rest. I like it. It's good. This is actually a pedal riser. So on your pedal board, if you've got two rows of pedals, the front row you have low and then the row behind you have behind so that goes onto the velcro on your board and then you put the pedal on top of here and it's that little bit higher so even if you've got a flat board it's easy to access the second row of pedals this thing when i used to have a big board is awesome so you know it just works like here's the pedal by the way this is super whoops super awesome this pedal this is a fuzz pedal from jhs and it's got, it's a, a fuzz. It's a Spitfire fuzz. Nice. Cool. Makes a hell of a noise. Sounds like an airplane. I was teaching black keys this week. It's good for that. So like that. All right. So it's it just cool. sits it's a little, a little bit up. It's like a little sled for pedals. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you know, jingle bells. <laughs> um, fuzz jingle bells. Fuzz jingle yeah, bells. Yeah. So it's, um, that's awesome. I really like that. Nice. It's one of those sorts of things I saw in, in, in on somebody else's board and i was like that's an awesome idea why doesn't everybody have those um, but then i've never seen them since now so, let me ask you something aren't the pedal boards aren't they built with risers on them some of them or no yeah some of them some okay. of them but like if i guess if you've got a flat one um yeah a flat one then what that's uh, all so right my second sort of yeah. less bicycle pump less obvious Oh, nice. No idea what that is. Is that like yes. another guitar? Oh, it's a slingshot. Yeah. It, it, the original one that David used. So this is called a stand back. And how it works is it is a portable amp stand. Oh, I thought it was like stand back because I'm going to fling a rock at you. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> so the amp sits on this little rubbery foamy thing. And so you can lean the amp back so it can point up to your ears so you don't have the amp too loud because nobody wants that right because often uh and I, I i played in loads of bands you get guys who turn up with a combo amp and the combo amp is like this tall so it points the sound that way and mm -hmm. not many people have ears attached to their ankles i mean you know right and uh so what you want is you want the amp to face up that point, points up at you, right? So this is amazing, this thing. And I've, I've, you can see I've had some running repairs here. I've lost some of the bits. Uh, but it basically used to screw and used to fold down. I used to put it in my guitar case. And then, I don't know, packing up a one night. portable amp stand, that's good. I've got one of those, you know, you fold it out. It's, it's just, it's a little bit clunky. Yeah, this is awesome. So it actually folds to like this long, right? Mm -hmm. So... You put the amp on there and it, it holds up to like, I don't know, 100 kilos or something apparently. And it's, be, it's just awesome. I love this thing. It is fantastic. So those are my two slightly more unusual, okay. awesome ga guitar gadgets. This thing, though, is awesome. Because, okay. you know, it just means that you, you set the amp right. Like, so as long as you're standing at least sort of five, six feet away from the amp, then you're not going to be playing too loud. It's, awesome so i did a video recently about my uh three favorite gadgets and my number one and i and i did it first in the video because i wanted to shout it from the rafters from the rooftop is a is a guitar um footstool uh i can't tell you how much of a difference this has made for me i'm just so relaxed right now i've got my you know my right and i put my right foot up on it i don't play it like a occasionally i'll do it like a classical player um, sometimes if I'm playing finger style or learning something new, but most of the time I've got it on my, on my right leg, you know, up with the guitar on my right leg. And it's just, 
it's really comfortable. It just takes pressure off my back. Um, it brings the guitar up a little higher. So I've got, you know, a better angle for my, um, for my right hand and my left hand. Just, uh, I would say you can do it for free. You can grab a couple books and just stack them up and see how it feels, but definitely give it a try because it really was a game changer for me. You know, um, it's interesting. So uh, I've been, I haven't taught an in-person guitar lesson since the 12th of March, 2020, right? I've been doing all of my lessons online because uh, I've got health stuff and my wife's a singer and we couldn't have the coronavirus in the house. We'd lose so much money and blah, blah, blah. Um, and it's interesting you say that because over the last little while, because I've been always on camera, like I always used to be a good boy and play guitar properly, you know, like legs at five to one, sitting up straight, guitar in your tummy, all these kind of really basic posture situations, you know, and, you know, you'd, you'd play guitar properly. properly. Um, but since I've been talking to camera, I've often crossed my legs to get the guitar a little bit higher so I can get the whole thing in the shot. Mm -hmm. That's... And that's not, you and know, that gets tiring, like right? Hours, Crossing your legs, it's comfortable for a few minutes, and after a while, it gets yeah. uncomfortable, right? You have to, you have yeah. to uncross, yeah. So this is. I'm not going to buy a football. This all night. I spend, I spend two, three, four hours playing with this, and it's just, it's so much better. The funny thing is, so you're mentioning, I teach, I still have a few students that I teach in person, and up until last week. I only had one footstool. So when I'm teaching, I always give it to my student to use during the lesson. And I'm like, ah, this sucks. And I've got a cross and stuff like that. And as soon as the lesson's over, I grab it. And I'm like, you know, they only cost like 12 bucks. Why don't I buy another one? So I finally wised up. It only took me three years to figure out that uh, buying two would probably be the uh, best way. So anyway, yeah. so that one. And then the uh, one of the other things that I had um, talked about in my video was the silent plug. And I don't have the one that I was referring to, but the one that I was referring to, uh, the way the technology worked is there's a dimple on the actual jack itself. And the dimple, when you, when you push the jack in, the dimple engages, hence the, uh, the cable engages. So right on the cable on. itself, am I freezing up? No, no, it's good. It's just I got rid of the comments so we could see what you were doing okay. with the plug. Yeah, so so there was like a little dimple right on there. So when you push it in, it engages. So I, I, I like that one. But uh, Diderio, Planet Waves, and this company, K-M-I-S-E. -K I don't know how you say that. But that's the cheaper version. I bought the cheap one to try first. So $15, $20, and $25. But now they have it where it's got a button on it. So you put the jack in. And then you push, you know, got nothing. And then I push the button and now it engages. So I like this even better. It's just, I think it's even more convenient now. So the great thing about it is when I'm live on stage, you know, I just go like this, you know, I got the, um, I got my guitar cranked. I just go like this, take it out, throw it down and, and put my guitar down. And that everything, I keep everything on. It's just so That's convenient awesome. to do it that way. Yeah. So this has one of those dimply things. The wireless does, uh -huh. so you right? Yeah, it, it's on and it's off. So that's that's been great. I've got, I didn't even mention that. That's how good. Yeah, same kind of thing. Yeah, you you get. There's no noise. Yeah. See, plugged in. Didn't make a noise. Right, right. What's the noise that yours makes? All right, and I'll give you my third one, and then you could go again, Simon. And I got a couple okay. of real other other real dumb ones. Oh, so my this God, it's like the dream. Yeah. So. I, I got a bunch of people. I had a bunch of people that wrote back to me and said that, you know, they're still old school and they like to use the string winder. And there's two reasons why. First of all, I think it's a little more expensive now. I bought mine for $12.99. I bought, you know, what, $14 oh. with tax. I think it's like $19.99 now. But for 20 bucks, this thing is, it's, it's a no brainer. Not, be, not just because it's so much faster to get strings off. Um, to get strings on, but more importantly, you can use one hand now because you've got this hand on, on, you don't need two hands to do the winder, set it up or hold the neck. You know, this is basically one hand. I know you guys can't even see me. I'm sorry. One hand on the tuning pegs. And then I can use this hand to line the string up. So the best thing about it is you just get a nice, neat wind on it. It's just, it's, oh, it's a no brainer, a no brainer. Oh, one of my gadgets was going to be this thing, 
But that is any excuse for power tools, right? Now, no, but you mentioned power tools. Now, the one that attaches to the drill, I don't recommend that one. I mean, Ooh. I put that on, you know, it's like boom, and I it popped the string off. I did that like five times. So the battery, you know, a single double A battery, one and a half volts is just enough to get the thing, you know, rolling fast enough, but you know, slow awesome. enough where you're not out of control. Yeah, but so but the combo of these things where you have the chopper, the thing that pulls the plugs off the, you know, off the back of that's the, important the, too those things get stuck sometimes yeah yeah and and these are good because it's tempting to go and get a screwdriver or something like that and then you're going to make a hole in your guitar right so that that kind of thing is good and then obviously though it's good you know what i use uh, oh, yeah. I, I just, I just mentioned it so i bought these extra bridge pens you get them on amazon they're like oh, six yeah. bucks and the best part about these is it comes with a little thingamajig that just like you uh, talked yeah, about, yeah, it's good. pops them off. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I use. All right, that's what awesome. else you got? Uh, what else I got? Um, capos. Capos, yeah. So there's capos and there's capos. Now a lot of people, a lot of singer songwriters and guy playing covers bands and stuff, they have those ones that look like giant clothes peg. You know where they it opens up and then they sit on the end of the guitar when they're not doing the capo thing and you know and that is super convenient. I totally get that. They always put the guitar out of tune. Always. They always do what? Put the guitar out of tune. So I've got a thing for that. Tommy Emanuel gave me, or, you know, gave me like he gave it to me personally. But so let's, let's are, pretend. I'm sorry. Let's pretend that's true that he actually like just told me personally. So yeah. you basically, it comes down to Schaub or Kaiser, right? I mean, those are, everything is a derivative of those two. I, I like the Kaiser better. They're, they're quicker to get on, but like Simon says, typically they do pull out, especially your, your lower strings. So what I do, what Tommy Manuel taught me to do is after you put the capo on, you push the strings in just like this, like, you know, into right. the sound hole. Push it in, and that will pull the strings enough usually to get them to pretty close tune. Now, there is there's tuning, there's in tune, and there's in tune, right? I mean, there's in tune where you're doing a show, the next song is rolling, you got to be you know good enough, and then there's in tune where you're you know you're getting ready for a um, you know what? I actually put I'm so pissed. I put a little dent in my guitar from that stupid thing. Ah, oh. oh man, oh it's brutal. Ah, that's the worst mm -hmm. gadget. Yeah, that so, um, but um, this this really helps. But another way to do it, and I'll show you, because I, I use a capo all the time. And, and for those of you that play a 12-string, yes, you need a 12-string capo for a 12-string guitar. A six-string capo is not going to work. on At least on, a, on an acoustic 12-string, it's not going to work. So if you're using the Shub style, these are a little more reliable to not get out of tune. What you want to do is you want to put it on, and you want to slowly press it against the strings first, and then engage the back, and that'll make it less likely to pull. The Kaiser, harder to do that, but same thing. You squeeze it. Oh, can't, I got my 12 string cape here. Squeeze it and try to, you know, get that lined up, you know, bring that in, you know, this way against the strings, and then slowly push that back on. But the Kaiser inevitably is gonna pull a little bit, so you want to, um, but if, you know, if you're doing quick changes in, in the middle of songs and yeah. stuff, or, you know, you need, you know, I think the Kaiser's Kaiser's better. Yeah, so I've used this Shub number forever. It's awesome. It works great. Like it's awesome. But then a few years ago, I sort of sucked into buying one of these things. This G7. Oh yeah, those are good too. I forgot about those. Yeah, those are good too. So huh? the idea of this is you literally just boom, and it's on. You make the noise too, and right? A little release, right? Goes there, and that's how you release it which sounds like it's going to be better, but I've actually found that like, even if you do your trick where you put the thing and then push and it sometimes doesn't grab that, like it's good, but is it worth like, this was like three times more expensive than this. Wow. Three times more expensive. So like 50 bucks this for that is like thing? 80 bucks, this thing. Yeah. Oh, Australian. This is like 80 bucks. Right. Right. And this is like 30 bucks. All right. We're, we're getting, we're getting late in the show here. So I want to, I want to do this. So the pick punch, right? We all know the pick punch. So 
So when people, I don't think anybody really likes to pick punch, but the idea is you get a, um, I think it comes with here, excuse me for a second. I think it comes with like a number of little um, things that you can, yeah. It comes with these little guys, these little strips, but you can use a credit card or whatever. And you basically, you put it in here and you go like this and you punch a pick out. And obviously the pick is a piece of crap and this is a piece of crap, but I've got something for you. So I want you to pay careful attention here because this will help you out immeasurably. Watch. Now, if you're like me and you already have the pick punch, if you're stuck with it, I did find one good use for it. So I have here my uh, wedding book for my marriage to my first wife. Now, if you're like me, you probably invited a lot of your close friends. Here we go. All the guys that were in my wedding parties. Obviously, you know, I'm not going to display this picture. However, I can use the pick punch. So you see there's, there's one little problem with that picture and it's standing in the middle. So all I need to do is... Yep, I got the spot perfectly, and I just, look at that, cut it out, look at that. See, so the pick punch is good for something. <laughs> That's very good, I like it, very good. Uh, what else did I have? Oh yeah, comfortable guitar straps. Comfortable guitar straps. So a few years ago, I, um, I bought these guitar straps from Soldier. They are in Chicago. I know. So, so, like, so and they basically so, repurpose. So they repurpose um, seatbelts from cars. So you know, I was doing my bit, and but with also awesome designs on the front. You get like <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes they have like blood or brain matter on them. The seat yes, belt. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but this is super comfortable, even with the Les Paul situation, because it's nice and wide. And it's not one of those sort of, you know, I need to, the sheepskin kind of thing over my shoulder. And that is never, it never seems to be in the right place. Yeah. Right? But the, this is soup. These were super awesome. And I bought two at the time. I bought like this sort of funky, goldy blue number. And I bought a, uh, it's, probably still attached to the guitar. There was absolutely millions of designs. I bought this one for the sort of lighter guitars. It's just, they're just awesome. They're super comfortable. You know, they work in the regular way. You know, awesome. Yeah, I like to, I like to know, I think that each one should come with a little, uh, little story about, you know, what exactly happened and why that seatbelt was repurposed. You know, was it... <laughs> Anyway, so I've got, and then, oh, go ahead. I'm so, sorry, please go. I've got one more, yeah. one tiny more. At, I was at the beginning, I said the two things that were revolutionized and this one almost got into the top two, but not quite. A few years ago, I was a few years ago, about 15 years ago, I was on tour in on the East Coast of Australia and this bloke came to the show and we're having a chat afterwards and he's like, oh, I'm a, oh, there's these new strings. And I was like, okay, guitar strings, guitar strings. And he's like, I'm the wholesaler for this new brand here in Australia. And he gave me some strings. And I was like, oh, thanks, man. That's awesome. Because at the time, I was, I was doing lots of um, acoustic duo trio shows up and down the coast. And like, literally, I would get like two shows out of a set of strings. Right? Maybe three shows. And they were just absolutely goosed after I, you know. And that's if, that's if you wipe them down. Oh, and I did. I was pretty good. Um, but the fact of the matter is that, like, the string costs throughout a year, if you did, like, 80 shows mm -hmm. or whatever, it was like, you know, you'd, you'd be replacing the strings, like, 50 times or something. Yeah. Maybe yeah. 40 times. And each time it's 15, 20 bucks. Well, I generally try and get cheaper ones because you couldn't get the ritzy ones every time. And... Um, Elixir. Yeah. They're good. The coated string. And so I, we, I went from replacing the strings. Yeah. I went from replacing the strings like 30 times in a year to like one time. Dude, I replaced. And so Salvador was just asking about how often do you restring guitars? Not very often. Let me tell you something. You're talking about the guy that literally has, this is Every like. single brand. I've got more strings. Yeah. I, I put new strings on my guitars like. Like every three days, I, I hate old strings. 
So I'm not, not really? these days, but like, yeah. They're the Cross River. They're awesome. Yeah, they're good. I know. And I use them for my acoustics, but I still, I still, you maybe, don't like I'll, the maybe a month, maybe I'll go a month with those. So I've got this, um, I've got this thing. Oh. My friend sent this to me and, and yeah. I don't know if I've ever really opened this. So it, it comes in this nice velvet bag. And right now, just so you know, my, my number one worst thing is that stupid, pla this thing right here. I don't know who made this. But this one sucks. All right. So don't, don't buy work. this. It just, and another thing before I get into this. So there's a friend of mine who knows the guy that invented the jellyfish pick. If you don't know what the jellyfish pick is, it's a pick that has, it literally has like metal wires coming out of it. And all it does is scratch the crap out of your guitar. And the guy that invented it was a, I think he was like a trust fund kid that got stoned one night and was like hitting a brush against the guitar and was like, Hey man, that sounds like great. Sounds like a 12 string. So he advertised it, you know, make it sound like a 12 string, make it sound like, and literally all it does is like scratch the crap out of your guitar. So the jellyfish, look it up. It's really stupid. But this, this looks like it could be promising, right? It's got a nice like velvet crushed velvet bag and I, and I open it and I'm like, Oh, what is this? So when I open it up and I take it apart, which I can barely do. Oh, I, I don't know if I can even get it open right now here. Um, there is, I remember like wondering what the heck it was. Where, how do I open this? Maybe, ah, well, I guess, oh, there we go. Got it. You slide it off. So oh, this, no. so this. Oh my God. You're supposed to, no, you can't strum with this. It's not like, you know, you know, uh, tip through the, to the, uh, tip <laughs> through the tulips, right? This is like supposed to be, you know, whatever, I'm just hanging out. Let me just, you know. Fed a C chord, you know, you know what it feels like, you know, get those fingers working or you know, maybe I'll, you know, maybe I'll do this through the spider. I mean, how stupid is this? And it comes in this fancy with the slider. I, and the, you know, I like the, the, you the industrial uh, design on that thing, you know, in the thing anyway. So yeah, that's, um, I've got a bunch of, bunch of stupid. Hey, you know, one other good thing, um, my friend, Tom, who's on here right now, Tom G, um, turn me on to these, um, these Fred Kelly picks. I know Fred Kelly makes a lot of picks, but he makes these. If you're a finger style player like I am, it actually looks like somebody's given the finger, right? It's not what it's meant to be, yeah, but like they're it. these. They're really good for uh, for finger style, especially if you're a finger style player. That typically, you know, if you're a thumber, these oh, are all those guys use those picks, right? These are a good transition. Yeah, if you're if you play typically, if you play finger style with your thumb, this is a good transition to the more you know, what I use, which is the more, you know, typical. typical yeah, I've tried style. to use those things. I just can't. Yeah, you got to, you kind of got, you got to go backwards. Yeah, right. But they're a good, they're a good way to kind of wean yourself into using them. Um, and there are some songs that just sound better um, without the thumb pick, like um, Never Going Back Again, Salisbury Hill. Um, yep. I think those were recorded. They were recorded without a thumb pick. You can tell that there's, you're not getting that extra percu mm. percussive sound on the bass on those songs. So um, this is also a good option for that. If you're, if you, if you're used to playing with a, um, with a thumb pick, it kind of takes a little bit of the um, emphasis off the, um, off the bass strings as well. So, yeah, you're right. all right. I so think. what are we, we were going to have a, we were going to have a vote, weren't we? Or yeah. Yeah. Let's vote. Let's do a little vote here. So let's vote. Um, all right. Let's, Everybody give based on based Let's on have, anything. Maybe, maybe we should have a bit of a recap of the things. A recap. All right, Simon, you recap. Recap. We do a recap, like the top things. The top so we're thing. out. So I'm going to go for my three top things. What are your top are, three, Simon? And then you guys vote and tell us what you think. My top three is the $200 wireless, which has been awesome. The clip-on tuner, because in lessons, it's just you're constantly in tune. It's awesome. And uh, the Elixir strings. Okay. With an honorable mention to the amp stand back thing. With the amp stand. Mm -hmm. Well, my number one definitely is the footstool. My number yeah, two, I, I think, would be, uh, my number two would be, even though it sounds a little pricey for clip on tuner and I can't find it now, it would be the, oh, here we go, would be the Peterson uh, uh, strobe click on. Because again, 70 bucks versus 200 for the pedal. And again, you get the convenience of now, one thing though, I will, if you decide to buy one of these and you haven't used, a strobe tuner before you have to get used to it. It's a little different tuning style. You have to, yeah, you have to get, it's a, uh, it takes a little work to get used to. Let me see if I can, uh, 
I can, I don't know if I can hear, let me do this. Yeah, I can do this. Turn it the other way. So let them see it. So essentially it, um, it has a, here we go. Can you see that? Yeah, you can. It's good. Just got to get used to how that is. Yeah. And you got to get real slowly. You want to yeah. get it until it stops moving. Yeah. You have to have a real. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, right yeah. there. They're super, super accurate, though. Takes a little bit of time. So that would be my number two. Um, yeah, those would be my top two. So you guys, why don't you guys vote? See what we'll get for our. And then while you're voting, let's 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 talk about our worst ones. My uh, my worst one obviously is the thing that just jacked up my guitar. Uh, <laughs> and my second so, so one, the, the the pick thing. The pick so, punch. Uh, Michael Michael uh, Michael Osterhaus said like. It might be stupid, but the guy who made it made an absolute mozza out of it. It was fair play. The the, the we made a lot that, of money out of it. I just translating from Australia. The thing the thing that um that 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 I ruined my guitar with that one or the pick punch or both. The pick punch, you would have made a fortune out of that. Like yeah. everybody, I everybody I know who plays guitar seems to have one. Yeah. Now do String you want to play it? Or I guess you know, like if you, it would be good if you um, you know, I don't know if you have like your an old credit card or something like that or. Maybe a, like your then, then, then I've, I've done that, but then the plastic of the credit card, come, it's not the right material. Yeah, if you were to go and buy a sheet of Tortex, then yeah. I reckon it would be awesome. But then, yeah. then the edges wouldn't be beveled anyway. Like, because you know that with the regular picks, there's always a bit of a bevel. Yeah, I mean, I've got, let me give you a little behind the scenes of what goes on in the Rinaldi house with picks. Like this is my, this is my pick box. I've literally got like hundreds, hundreds of picks and I use a different one for each song. Oh, for this real? is my this is my um this is the pick that I use for uh um uh, what's it called mm -hmm. uh, pinball wizard. This is the yeah, pick right. I use. This is the pick I use when I play um uh the first three originals off my first. <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't really. Um, uh, one of the picks though, just quickly, I use these. Uh, who is it? Jim Dunlop, and they're called Max Grip. Max Grip. Yeah. I'll do with it. Do, you, you do, do they there? not slip? Because you know what I do? Every gig, the first thing I do here, I get my mic. The first thing I do when I um when I get ready for a gig is I put tape right here yeah. and I tape yeah. like 10 picks because I'm always dropping picks. But yeah, if, yeah. If, if that um hey Rabbi. If hey that, Rabbi, um, thanks for that, man. Appreciate yeah. that. Uh yeah, the, these things you literally can't drop it. It's impossible. It's impossible to drop it. Like you try to drop well, it. I mean, you know, finger, right? Yeah. Oh, look at that. Is that magic or are you really doing that? <laughs> no, I'm literally doing that. Do the thing with They're the pretty... scarf now. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, I, um, I, right. like, I like, um, I use 96 or 125 usually for electric. And then I, you know, again, if you're playing 12 string guitar, there's no easier way to strike the string sets evenly than using a thin pick. So if you're a 12 stringer, Try try using a thin pick, and as you get better and more accustomed to it, you can move up to like medium, you know, but never more than a medium. It's hard to it's hard to get a good good strike on a on a, a twelve string with a heavy pick. So. Sandra was just saying recessed picks. So somebody bought me these wooden picks once, and they they they've got little recesses in them, which are cool. There's there's got to be some wooden picks in my in my thing. So let me see here. I've hey, got Sandra, them all. it's maybe because I'm just like a super clammy hands. It's been literally raining here in Australia for about six months and it's been terrible and people have had a really, really terrible time and it's flooded. And, and just as all the floods were abating here in New South Wales, it is literally absolutely hammering it down outside. That sucks. That's probably why my hands are a bit clammy. Yeah, so there's one of the guys, an early fan of the channel, his name is Orville Gibson. His, his real name is Orville Gibson. I thought that was just a screen name when I, because we all, some of us, some of you know that the inventor of Gibson guitars name was Orville Gibson, but his name is actually Orville Gibson. And he lives in, um, gosh, I forget where he lives now. He lives somewhere in one of the cities that's close to the, um, to the outback. Um, and he was stuck for like three weeks in a, um, like in one spot, like they couldn't get out. They yeah. boats would take them and bring them, yeah. you know, rescue supplies and stuff been, like that. But it's it's horrible, yeah. It's been so bad. Yeah. Anyway, there you go. Um, right. So, 
Uh, if you haven't seen my video, like, watch, go watch my video again. It's only five minutes. I did a cover of Two of Us. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. I'll check it out. Um, yes, yeah, so uh, that's it for today, isn't it? Yes, it is. A, oh, yep. Oh, it's all happening. Hello. 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 It's all oh. happening. I've got, a, I've, got a, I've got a lunch date. Nice. There you go. I've Don't got a lunch wife. date to go to. Literally. All right. Zach, hey, what's up, brother? All right, wait, wait. Never thought of a pick punch, but I did have the gadget that ruined Mark's guitar, he said. Yeah. 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 Does it Does it do – I don't know what it does. I don't know. I'll try to figure out what some of these things do afterwards, but uh, I think it's – You know, sucks. all that stuff, stretching your fingers, warming up, just play the guitar. Tracy says – I bought the one you suggested, Mark. And which one are you talking about now, Tracy? Picks, maybe. Oh wait, uh, picks. Oh yeah, the um, yeah, the yeah. She's talking about the uh, for the um, for the twelve string. Yeah, I've gotten a ton. When I say a ton, I mean like at least thirty people, more than that, fifty people have emailed me. You know, thanking me. Not that I, not that I did anything. I just, I was like, one day, I'm like, you know, wait. Oh, this really works well on the twelve string. Hey, I'll use a thin pick. You know, it's just you know, trial and error, like everything else. So. Anyway, you need it. You need to get a um, Simon. You need to get is Simon frozen, or is he like doing the Pledge of Allegiance? I think Simon is frozen. All right. Well, with that, Simon's got a date, and I'm going to say good night. I really appreciate y'all being here. Yeah, I got it, Tracy. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Before I freeze too, we're going to go. We will see you in two weeks. Thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Be safe. Take care.